Welcome everybody to the service for Sunday the 20th of August and I pray that we will all be blessed as we have our different experiences with God this morning. Looking at the parish, the birthdays on the 23rd of August, Jackie Beer, Ashwin Puden and Busi Tibete. On the 26th of August, Susan Howland, Bukhane Maseko and on the 27th of August, Isaac Lunger. We do wish you all a very happy birthday and pray that the year ahead will be truly blessed. The Lord be with you. Praise the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, 
Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. So let us confess our sins, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with our neighbor. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon our sins and set us free from them, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for the Twelfth Sunday after Pentecost. Let us pray. God of the foreigner and the outcast, no one is excluded from your embrace. Inspire us so to love the world that all will live in the dignity and security of belonging in God's family. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading this morning is taken from Genesis chapter 45, verses 1 to 15. Joseph tells his brothers who he is. Joseph was no longer able to control his feelings in front of his servants, so he ordered them all to leave the room. No one else was with him when Joseph told his brothers who he was. He cried with such loud sobs that the Egyptians heard it, and the news was taken in the king's palace. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But when his brothers heard this, they were so terrified that they could not answer. And then Joseph said to them, Please come closer. They did. And he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. Now do not be upset or blame yourselves because you sold me here. It was really God who sent me ahead of you to save people's lives. This is only the second year of famine in the land. There will be five more years in which there will be neither ploughing nor reaping. God sent me ahead of you to rescue you in this amazing way and to make sure that you and your descendants survive. So it was not really you who sent me here, but God. He has made me the king's highest official. I am in charge of his whole country. I am the ruler of all Egypt. Now hurry back to my father and tell him that this is what his son Joseph says. 
God has made me ruler of all Egypt. Come to me without delay. You can live in the region of Goshen where you can be near me. You, your children, your grandchildren, your sheep, your goats, your cattle and everything else that you have. If you are in Goshen, I can take care of you. There will still be five years of famine and I do not want you, your family and your livestock to starve. Joseph continued, now all of you and you too, Benjamin, can see that I am really Joseph. Tell my father how powerful I am here in Egypt and tell him about everything that you have seen. Then hurry and bring him here. He threw his arms around his brother Benjamin and began to cry. Benjamin also cried as he hugged him. And then, still weeping, he embraced each of his brothers and kissed them. After that, his brothers began to talk with him. Hear the word of the Lord. Psalm 133 Behold how good and how lovely it is when brothers live together in unity. It is fragrant as oil upon the head that runs down over the beard, fragrant as oil upon the beard of Aaron that ran down over the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon, like the dew that falls upon the hill of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded his blessing, which is life for evermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second reading is from Romans, chapter 11, verses 1 to 2, and 29 to 32. I ask then, did God reject his people? By no means. I am an Israelite myself, a descendant of Abraham from the tribe of Benjamin. God did not reject his people whom he foreknew. For God's gifts and his call are irrevocable, just as you who were at one time disobedient to God have now received mercy as a result of their disobedience so they too have now become disobedient in order that they may now receive mercy as a result of God's mercy to you. For God has bound all men over to disobedience so that he may have mercy on them all. Hear the word of the Lord. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the 15th chapter of St. Matthew, beginning at verse 10. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Then Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand, it is not what goes into a person's mouth that makes him ritually unclean. Rather, what comes out of it makes him unclean. Then the disciples came to him and said, Do you know that the Pharisees had their feelings hurt by what you said? Every plant which my Father in heaven did not plant will be pulled up, answered Jesus. Don't worry about them. They are blind leaders of the blind. And when one blind man leads another, both fall into a ditch. Peter spoke up, Explain this saying to us. Jesus said to them, You are still no more intelligent than the others. Don't you understand? Anything that goes into a person's mouth goes into his stomach and then on out of his body. But the things that come out of the mouth come from the heart. And these are the things that make a person ritually unclean. For from his heart come the evil ideas which lead him to kill, commit adultery, and do other immoral things, to rob, lie, and slander others. These are the things that make a person unclean. 
but to eat without washing your hands as they say you should. This doesn't make a person unclean. Jesus left that place and went off to the territory near the cities of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman who lived in that region came to him. Sir of David, she cried out, have mercy on me, sir. My daughter has a demon and is in a terrible condition. But Jesus did not say a word to her. His disciples came to him and begged him, send her away. She is following us and making all this noise. Then Jesus replied, I have been sent only to the lost sheep of the people of Israel. At this the woman came and fell at his feet. Help me, sir, she said. Jesus answered, It isn't right to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. That is true, sir, she answered. But even the dogs eat the leftovers that fall from their master's table. So Jesus answered her, You are a woman of great faith. What you want will be done for you. And at that very moment, her daughter was healed. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Nowadays, in most towns in South Africa, we are inclined to find foreigners doing business, like the Chinese-Taiwanese general dealer, or the Somalian shop selling clothes, or the Pakistani brothers repairing cellular phones or selling electronic gadgets. The homogeneous communities in South Africa, which we all grew up in, were products of our past when the government vigorously regulated how people lived. When we envisaged a new constitutional dispensation from 1994, we all thought our communities were going to become models of social integration. Sadly, we all lament at not grasping at this lost opportunity more tenaciously. In fact, in recent times, we have been saddled with the scourge of xenophobia. We may find that these new people are not like us. They do not speak the same language as we do. They dress differently and they have a different work ethic from us. In short, the new people are different. They are not like us and consequently we may not want them in our towns and in our communities. It has always been easy to draw a circle so that some are inside and others are out. It may be people of a different race or ethnic origin, different gender or gender orientation, age, educational background or ability. It is easy to look at the man with tattoos or the woman with many piercings, the man who stutters or the woman who does not have a university degree, and say that this person is just not like us. Our Gospel text for today speaks directly to us and them. Jesus has gone out of the land of Israel into the region of Tyre and Sidon, Gentile territory. Then a woman from the area comes to Jesus. Matthew uses the word Canaanite rather than Syrophoenician. This term is loaded for Jewish people because Canaanites were the pagan people whom the Israelites fought for centuries. The Canaanites were idol worshippers and opponents of the belief in the one true God. It was a Canaanite woman who came to Jesus. She came alone, without a husband, or son, or father. And she approached, shouting loudly, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. 
This woman was positioned at a disadvantage three times over. Firstly, she was not Jewish, and Jesus' mission, so he told her, was to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Secondly, she was a woman and she spoke to a man without a male intermediary. Thirdly, she was a pest whose screaming and shouting behavior was not inclined to endear her to Jesus and his followers. Indeed, the disciples came and urged Jesus, Send her away, for she keeps shouting at us. The circle is clearly drawn. Jesus and the disciples and Jewish men are inside. This annoying Canaanite woman is outside. It is interesting to observe how much a man of his time and place Jesus was. Jesus agreed, it seems, with the disciples. He tried to brush the woman off. His mission was to Israel only. Yet she had confessed him Lord and Messiah, something many in Israel would not confess. She had asked him for mercy and knelt down before him in a posture of supplication and worship. She had faith that Jesus could heal her daughter of a tormenting demon. What did Jesus do when she would not go away? He retorted by saying that it was unfair to throw the food of the children to the dogs. The Jews called the Gentiles dogs, and it was not a term of endearment, but rather of derision. It was a term used by Jesus for this woman, but she turned around and used the same phrase to say to Jesus, Yes, Lord, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. She had cornered him there. She broke the circle and entered in. Salvation came to her and her possessed daughter, not because she became Jewish or promised to keep the law of Moses. She outwitted Jesus and remains the only person in scriptures to do this. But here in Matthew's Gospel, she finds salvation through faith in Jesus alone. Jesus said to her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done to you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The gospel is not just for men, for Jews, for people who conform to our expectations of them. It took the church a long time to realize this. The first great controversy in the Christian church was whether Gentiles had to become Jews before they could become Christians. Paul argued that Gentile men did not need to be circumcised to be baptized, and Peter had revealed to him by God that the dietary laws commanded in the Hebrew Bible were no longer required. No person was to be called common or unclean, at the Council of Jerusalem, it was agreed that Gentiles could become Christians. I remember in the Anglican Church in Southern Africa, when women were allowed to be priests in congregations, some individuals withdrew from our church body because they would not accept women priests. In many churches today, women are still not allowed to become priests or church leaders. In some Christian denominations, people with handicaps were not allowed into the seminaries because they were seen as blemished and not according to the Old Testament. Those with impediments were not worthy to serve the Lord. We are all sinners and have fallen short of the glory of God. Paul, writing to the Romans, declares that Jews and Gentiles are both sinners and and invited to be God's people through faith in Jesus. We are not saved by our gender 
or our status, our race or educational level, by our sexual orientation or our good behavior. We do not find our self-worth in what others may think of us, but in being children of God and heirs to God's kingdom through faith in Christ alone. What our gospel text clearly says is we are saved by faith in Jesus alone. And in our text, we see how Jesus can set aside even clear scripture teaching for the sake of people. In the beginning of the 15th chapter of Matthew, Jesus examines the code of holiness of the Old Testament. He and his disciples were accused of not washing their hands before they ate. Jesus argued that it was not what went into a person that defiled, but rather the evil and malice that came out of the human heart. In the second part of the same chapter of our lesson, Jesus is setting aside the whole system of salvation in the Old Testament. The Hebrew Bible did care about the Gentiles and looked for the day when all nations would come to Zion. God's mission was in and through the Jewish people only. This is what Jesus starts to affirm. The gospel is for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the text does not stop there, and in this passage we see that the Old Testament scheme is set aside. God's good news is for all people, not just some. Christ died for all, not just some. Forgiveness is for all, not just some. The only condition is faith, which is itself a gift of God. Others may be different from ourselves, and often what makes them different is something we do not like. The church has been guilty of keeping people out rather than inviting them in. We are human beings and fallen, sinful ones at that. We know what we like, and we like what we know. Think of the disciples. They were the same way. Some of us may have been hurt by the church, by what people have said about us. During tea after the service, the same people talk to the same people every week. And if you are a newcomer, you may be ignored. Some people have gotten dirty looks for sitting in someone else's pew. You may have been asked to leave the service if your children were fidgety. You may have been shamed because you failed to pay your pledge or scolded because you had missed services. Remember, the disciples were not God. Remember that neither the church nor the clergy nor the council is God either. God is faithful and loving, even when God's servants may not be. God draws the circle wide enough to bring everyone in. Never let anyone or anything try to separate you from God's love in Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. O holy, blessed, and glorious Trinity, three persons in one God, have mercy on us. Lord, remember not our offenses, nor the offenses of our forebears. Spare us, good Lord. Spare your people whom you have redeemed with your precious blood. Spare us, good Lord, from all evil and wickedness, from sin, from the cunning assaults of the devil, from your wrath, and from your everlasting condemnation. Good Lord, deliver us. From all spiritual blindness, from pride, vanity, and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred, malice, and all uncharitableness. Good Lord, deliver us. 
in all times of trial and sorrow, in all times of joy and prosperity, in the hour of death and the day of judgment, good Lord, deliver us. Govern and direct your holy church, fill it with love and truth, and grant it that unity which is your will. Hear us, good Lord. Give us the boldness to preach the gospel in all the world and to make disciples of all nations. Hear us, good Lord. Enlighten all bishops, priests and deacons with true knowledge and understanding that by their life and teaching they may proclaim your word. Hear us, good Lord. Give to all nations peace, unity and concord and grant to all people freedom and dignity, food and shelter. Hear us, good Lord. Enlighten and direct our rulers Grant that they may put their trust in you and seek only your honour and glory. Hear us, good Lord. Teach us to use the resources of the earth to your glory, that all may share in your goodness and praise you for your loving kindness. Hear us, good Lord. Help and comfort the lonely the aged, the bereaved, the overworked, the exploited and the oppressed. Hear us, good Lord. Support and encourage all who are in poverty, unemployment or distress. Protect those whose work is dangerous and keep in safety all who travel. Hear us, good Lord. Defend and provide for the widowed, the orphaned, all migrant workers and refugees, the homeless and the victims of strife. Have pity on prisoners and all who live in fear. Hear us, good Lord. Heal the sick in mind and body. Strengthen and preserve all young children. Hear us, good Lord. Forgive our enemies, persecutors and slanderers and turn their hearts. Hear us, good Lord. Saviour of the world, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and things left undone. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may amend our lives according to your holy word. Amen.
We come now to the celebration of the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. For us it becomes the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. For us it becomes the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Redeemer. He is your living Word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfilment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you, and so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross, that he might shatter the chains of the evil one and banish the darkness of sin and death. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now, with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Who in the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is my blood, which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. So we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering therefore his death and resurrection, we bring before you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church. Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honour are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. As Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, 
the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The bread which we break, is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Draw near and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. The body of Christ broken for us. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for us. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. His mercy endures forever. Almighty and eternal God, we thank you for feeding us in these holy mysteries with the body and blood of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and for keeping us by your grace in the body of your Son, the company of all faithful people. Help us to persevere as living members of that holy fellowship, and to grow in love and obedience according to your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out into the world in the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. God bless Africa, protect our children, transform our leaders, heal our communities, restore our dignity, and give us peace for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, remain with us now and always. Amen. So dear friends, go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.
that say